Huskies are on the verge of becoming a dynasty. Hi everyone, I'm Don Bradshaw along with Rick Lafitte. Welcome you to Game 4 of the Quinnipiac Boys High School Basketball Championships featuring the host Herdman Huskies and the visiting Regina Knights. The Knights currently trail the series two games to one and a win tonight by the Huskies will give them their third city championship in a row. And Rick, certainly the Herdman Huskies have Regina right where they want them. They're on the home court. They're up two games to one in the series. Well, exactly. A big win in game number three. And I guess the key will be the, to see how the Knights handle the pressure tonight in the smaller gym. Pretty obvious that the Huskies will go back to that press and see how uh, successful they can be. And if they are successful in game number two, they'll be champions again. So sit back, relax. We've got game four coming up for you right here on Cable 9. Welcome back to the Herman Collegiate Gymnasium. Just getting ready to start game four of the Quinnipiac Boys High School Basketball Championships. Rick, uh, as we mentioned in the pregame show, the Herman Huskies have got to feel confident they're playing here in their home gymnasium where they uh, came off a 169 win two games ago. And they've got Regina with their backs against the wall. Well, they accomplished what they had to uh, set out to do in game number three with a big win on Regina's home court. And now it'll be up to the Knights to come into the cage here and pull off a win to stay alive. So both teams getting ready to be introduced to the fans here. Rick, we were noting that uh, the number of fans here tonight is probably the largest number we've seen in the Herman Gymnasium in the last couple of years. To say that this place has filled the capacity, it wouldn't be doing it justice. An unbelievable crowd here tonight. And John, uh, you were mentioning uh, if the Knights thought that the court was pretty small in game number two, it might be even smaller tonight because some of the fans are actually uh, sitting on the end lines very well, close to the action. Yes, we were noting that uh, before the game started that... Uh, I mean, there are, there are people over here sitting uh, sitting practically on the uh, the out-of-bound lines. Uh, we've seen in earlier games that they'd sit behind and their feet might drag out, but these people are actually sitting on the out-of-bound lines. So you're losing six or seven inches on either side of the gymnasium. It's going to be tough to dribble around those areas, and if Herbins can work that full court press again, get the guys trapped over in the corner, they're going to have a real jam to get out of. Just getting ready now for the announcement of the starting lineups. Not anticipating anything uh, too drastic in the way of changes. Both clubs have been going with a patented five throughout the course of the series, and I would imagine that'll be the case here again this evening. Well, we noted in game three of the series, the, as we see, the number of fans here. And that's, that's certainly just uh, a percentage. It's not doesn't cover the entire gymnasium. We can probably pan across and get a shot of the large, strong people that are here this evening. See Regina Knights getting ready to be introduced now. And I guess, Don, a uh, key for the Knights in this contest is going to be uh, what sort of start they might get off to because of the Herdman pressure start playing as much havoc tonight as it did in game number two. There might be a few problems for the Knights, but if they get off to a good start, the confidence might start to build and they might stay in it. Well, I'm sure the Regina Knights have been working on that a little bit over the last couple of days, knowing they had to come back here to game four. They'll be working on, in practices uh, how to uh, go against the full court press because I would... Uh, I would bet just about anything that Herman are going to come out and try to use that full court press tonight uh, against the Regina Knights. It was tremendously successful against them in game two. So they, I, I can't see why they'd abandon it tonight. And you see the Knights, familiar faces, all of them. The starting lineup, Dean Barker at center, Frank White and Ian Cook at forward, and TJ Power and Trask. Young Jason Trask, your other guard. And now this place about to erupt as we get set to get the announcement of the starting five for the Herdman Huskies who look to three-peat with a win here before the home crowd.
And there's Dean Porter. He's going to play a pivotal role in this contest, I'm sure, with the, the defensive game that Herman will be using here tonight. Dean Porter is going to be called on largely to make a lot of those defensive plays. Porter averages about six points a game, but he certainly makes up for what he may lack in offense with his tenacity. And here's the big man, the key to it all for the Herman Huskies, Shannon Richards. He's had a tremendous series thus far. Shannon averaging 23 points a game. Started off slow with his uh, series low 16 in game one, but he rebounded with 34 points the last time these two teams met on the Her Herman Collegiate Gymnasium. So it's going to be interesting to see tonight how Shannon Richards comes back to Herman. Will he have another big game, another big 34-point game or a 30-plus game? Certainly he's going to be the man to control the offense for the Herman Huskies here tonight. Getting set down for the opening tip-off, game number four by this best of five series. Huskies leading it two games to one. Smallwood and Barker to tip. Big, big game for the Regina Knights. They can't afford to get down early in this contest. Their backs against the wall are in a must-win situation. A loss here gives Herman their third city championship in a row. Huskies get possession. Shannon Richards gets it to ride out. Michael Barrett from outside. Shot is up. No good. T.J. Power on the rebound. And there's that full court press we talked about, Rick. The Huskies coming out with it right away. Trask. Nice move on Richards. Down low to Barker. Battled away by Barrett. Shannon Richards gets it back. Richards, lovely pass inside, and Corey Ryder is there for the first basket of this contest, and the Huskies lead 2-0. T.J. Power is fouled. Team Porter draws the first foul of this contest. And again, uh, Don, we were mentioning the thing about Shannon Richards. Not only is he a very pure scorer, but he makes uh, some very nice passes from time to time as well, and it led to the first Husky basket. Well, we said he was going to control the play, and that's definitely what he's done here thus far. Well, Frank White's shot was pinned between the backboard and the rim, so we get a dead ball, and the Knights will get it back. T.J. Power. Over to Trask, who fires from outside. No good. Small one underneath where he's been so tough throughout the course of this series. Shannon Richards now. You'll see him employing the ball handling for the Huskies throughout the course of this contest. Richards being watched closely by Trask. Richards fires. Short rim. Trask gets the rebound. Good defense there. And again, the Husky pressure. And it leads to a turnover. Well, again, the Regina Knights have got to settle down here. They can't afford to be turning the ball over like that. They get a little bit of pressure, and they end up coughing the ball up. That time, T.J. Power didn't quite have the hands. The ball went off the tips of his fingers, not a bounce, and Herdman recovers. Corey Wright out way outside. Shot's no good. Rebound goes to Frank White. Power again, looking at the pressure, gets it to White, and White travels. White that time a little too aggressive in going to the net. He saw a shot there. When he got the ball, he took an extra step. Then he decided to hold up. I think he got caught between dribbles there. Right out, down low. Smallwood from the middle of the key. Up, in and out. Rebound goes to Power. Power dribbles the length of the court. Stops, takes the shot. Good. And there's another player Rick has got to control this game. It's the T.J. Power for the Regina Knights. He's got to be the spark plug for the Knights in this contest. He's got to control the ball, work it down court. With the Herman defense using the full court press, T.J. Power is going to be called on a lot for good ball handling skills here in this contest. Mike Barrett misses another three-point effort. Frank White now drives the length. Shots up. Doesn't go, and there's Porter with the rebound. Good positioning there as Cook tried to get it. Shannon Richards with it. And again, Trask employing some tough defense on him. Richards takes him to the hoop, though. Shots up, no good. Rebound goes to Barker. Trask gets it over center line. Watch closely by Richards. Back to Power. TJ Power over to Trask. He's open. Shots up. Good. And Rick, there's the big thing that's going to come into play for the Regina Knights here tonight. That time, T.J. Power was double-teamed. Shannon Richards and Corey right out on him. 
and Power Man, TJ Power managed to find the open man. That time it was Jason Trask who put it in. Michael Barrett right down the middle of the lane getting his first basket tying the contest at four. 17.08 to go. We touched on this in game two. If the Herman Huskies use the full court press, they're going to be double teaming someone, which obviously mathematics will tell you there's an open man for Regina, and that's the man who's got to get the ball. Traz made the move in. I think we've got Barrett on the foul call. On the block, two shots. Jason Trask, the high game for him in this series has been only four points, so he's looking to contribute a little more offensively in the early going. And he's just three for six in the line this series. It's at four for seven. Trask nails the first shot to give the Knights a 5-4 lead. Second shot is up, and it is good. Six to four, your score. It is an absolute din in here, very loud. Right out, loses control, and the Knights get it back. Don, the Knights seem to be a little bit calmer to this point uh, of the contest. Trask again, he'll hold up, gets it to TJ Power. Power, over to Frank White. White makes the move down the middle. Shot is up, no good. Small with the rebound. He gets it to Porter. Well, Rick, I think this time the Regina Knights were prepared for the full court press defense. They came up here in game two, and I think the Huskies threw that defense at them and caught them a little off guard. They didn't quite know how to defend against it. This time they, they were quite aware that this was going to happen, so I'm sure they worked on that in practice over the last couple of days. Well, Shannon Richards has it stuffed away by Dean Barker, and we've noticed that he has become much more of a presence under the defensive boards for the Knights as this series has gotten along. There's the replay of it, swatted away by the big man. Shannon Richards makes the offensive move. Shot is up. No good. Rebound by Barker. Gets it to Trask, and now T.J. Power over the middle. Loses the Porter. Shannon Richards has got a free layup, and it's good. Well, you Dean can't Porter. afford to give Shannon Richards baskets like that because he'll make those every single time. Gets an easy layup, goes in untouched. T.J. Power being hounded by Porter. Gets it back to Trask. Right outs on him. Trask taking it down to the baseline over to Cook, who almost throws it away. Power can't save as Porter's there for the steal. Corey right out now. Down low, Smallwood fires. Back rim, rebound goes to Barker. T.J. Power with it. Looking for a bit of help. Gets it from White. White takes the length. Offensive foul is called. Well, we've seen Frank White do that a couple of times already in this series. He gets the sight set. He sees the ball, or he sees the basket, rather, with the ball, and he just drives for it. It doesn't matter who's in front of him. This time we see Mark Small with the victim. He holds his ground. Frank White just runs into him and gets called with the offensive foul. Well, Smallwood has shown a willingness to sacrifice his body for those foul calls. Smallwood now with it. Shannon Richards in the middle. Shots up, no good. Rebound to Barker. Dean Barker with a number of defensive boards early on. Ian Cook back to the big man. Barker on Smallwood. Shots up, no good. Rebound goes to Cook. Smallwood's down on the court. No whistle, though. Mark Smallwood appeared to take an elbow to the chops. He was down for a few seconds. Let's wait on the foul call now from official Jim Keough. Well, that time Dean Barker had the ball was going up. Mark Smallwood there again, held his ground, went up to try to make the block, ended up getting caught. The officials now checking with Mark Smallwood just to see if he's okay. He was down on the floor for a good five or six seconds. Ricky never got up right away. A little cause for concern there. But he appears to be fine and will stay in the game. Corey right out now. 
Down to Shannon Richards. David Murden getting ready to check in. Richards moves the middle. They'll take it out of bounds. He was fouled before the shot. Jason Trask is called with the infraction. And Rick, with 14.29 to play in the first half here, both teams have come out pretty cold. Uh, we've seen a lot of shots early on, but not a lot of them have been dropping, as the score indicates, 6-6 six, well, six, that's, that's simply the pressure of the big game. Corey Rideout drains it. Rideout with four, and again, you can see the pressure. Trask, though, handles it. Good lead pass there to get the Knights on their way. T.J. Power now. Watch closely by Merton. Frank White from outside. Shots up and good. We're deadlocked at eight. Corey Rado with it. Don, I believe Frank White credited with a three-point basket on that yeah, occasion. A, a late call by the officials there. Jim, Jim Keogh, as he was coming down the court, indicated to the scorer's table that that was from three-point range. Nice pass down low. Ian Cook. Knights now leading 11-8. They have to be pleased with the start. Merton. To Smallwood, he's watched by Barker. Corey right out now. Over to Merton. Merton down low. Smallwood makes a move in the middle of the key. Shots up, no good. Smallwood battles for the rebound. Barker on the push. And Reg Barker, coach of Regina, calls a timeout. Just to settle this team down a little bit, leading 11-8 with 13 all three to play in the first half here. And Rick, we talked about it in the pregame show. The Regina Knights have got a lot of pressure on them, but if you, you look on the other side of the coin, the Herman Huskies have a lot of pressure on them too. They're one game away from winning the city championship. They're here in front of their home crowd on their home floor. That, that's a lot of pressure for a bunch of young guys to handle as well. And I think we've seen it early on. They're coming out and they're trying a little too hard. And they're, they're not connecting on their shots. And the results shows in the 11-8 deficit they're currently under. Oh, there's no doubt about that. The confidence level for the Huskies is uh, not at the point that it was in game two where they were hitting virtually everything. Struggling a little bit. As you see the crowds getting into it once again. 13.03 to go. So the crowd's quite vocal here again this evening. So we mentioned this has got to be the largest crowd I've seen for a basketball game here at Herman. There's not a not a shot, in the, not a seat in the house for anyone, not a spot to stand for anyone here. It's just, I mean, it's jam-packed. You can see behind our table, there's bodies squeezed in there. I think anywhere, basically, there's an inch of room to stand. There's somebody occupying it. Well, that's the beauty of this rivalry. Great crowds on hand. Enjoying some very entertaining basketball. Dean Porter now with it. Porter drives down the middle. Shots up and good. <laughs> Trask to TJ Power. Shot is up. No good. Rebound, though. Barker up. Foul is called. That'll be Dean Porter with his second foul as he caught Barker going up on the return on the rebound. We'll see Barker, and I watch him go up, and Porter is there, caught him with a little elbow. And that'll put Barker on the line. He's, just, he's had five free throws in this series, has made two of them. First shot is up and no good. Prepares for the second shot. That one is good. First point of the game for Dean Barker. Knights leading at 12-10. Shannon Richards. Back to right out. Barrett. Tries baseline. Got caught underneath though. Right out now with it. That shot is short. Gets it back though. Good work by Corey Rideout. Richards for three. Front rim's no good. Rideout again. 
Huskies off early. Smallwood underneath can't get it to go. And Barker finally gets the rebound for the Knights. Lead pass. Frank White drives. Misses the layup. Shannon Richards now. Well, Rick, both teams have got to settle down here. We've seen a couple of plays back-to-back -back now where they've missed easy baskets. First, Mark Smallwood directly under the net, and then Frank White going down for Regina, and he had an easy layup, and he missed it. Corey Rideout. Both clubs definitely not in sync yet offensively. Shannon Richards tries. He's off early. Gets back the rebound, though. Underneath the Porter, who misses. Finally, Smallwood gets it, and he's fouled. That's the second straight possession where we've seen the Huskies with multiple opportunities on the offensive boards, and Mark Smallwood gets his first basket. Foul is called on Ian Cook. See the wild action underneath. Dean Porter keeping it alive. Finally, Smallwood gets it and makes the layup and draws the foul. Smallwood hits the foul shot. Completing the three-point play. Huskies now have the lead 13-12. Barker underneath. Good. And again. TJ Power again with another nice assist on. A good handoff there by TJ Power. He could have elected to take the ball to the hoop himself, but he gave it to the big man, used the height advantage there. And Barker had the easy two points. Richards can't hit the three. Barker underneath with the rebound. T.J. Power to Ian Cook. This is the layup. Frank White gets the rebound, though, and it's back up and in. Frank White with five. 16-13 year score. Knights leading. Getting near the midway point of half number one. 10.30 to go. Shannon Richards down to Smallwood. Smallwood fires. Good. Mark Smallwood with five. T.J. Power takes it to length. Shots up, no good. Gets his own rebound, though. Fighting underneath. Reverse layup's no good. And finally, a tie-up underneath between Smallwood and Cook. And another foul on Ian Cook. Shannon Richards on Traz. Shots no good. Rebound to underneath the quarter. He can't get it to go. Finally, Cook is fouled. Smallwood on the body. He acknowledges the call. Smallwood's first foul of the game. It'll send Ian Cook to the line. Ian Cook. Six for 15 in this series. Hasn't had a good series from the line. Misses on his first one. So that's six for 16 this series. Ian Cook, uh, definitely a good ball player. And he has the ability to put the ball in, but he's just in, uh, in a slump from the free throw line this series. Well, the Knights failed to capitalize there on an opportunity. Dean Porter now. Porter almost being dared to take it to the basket. Gets it to Shannon Richards. Smallwood now. Shot is up and good. And Mark Smallwood continues to be an offensive press. That's seven for him. He's had performances of 16, 26, and 29. Down low. Cook keeps it alive, but it goes to ride out. Ryder will take. Corey Ryder with six. Oh, a super shot there by Corey Ryder. That time he made the jump shot, and he had a little half pumped as he was in the air. Kind of took the defender out of the play, and he laid it up there. Frank White now. Nice behind-the-back dribble. Nails the shot. Frank White, a very fine offensive performer. That's seven for him. 19-18, your score. Huskies lead, 8.50 to go here in half number one. Smallwood. Not this time. Barker gets the rebound. 
Gives it to White. Ian Cook now. Waits for TJ Power. Power loses, though, and this will be a layup for Rideout if he can catch up to it. Got too far underneath the basket, though, Don. Couldn't make the shot. Now Power the other way. Nice pass to Cook, and it's in. Well, saw battle early. And at the other end of the court, uh, Corey Wright had a little bit of tough luck. He had the bounce pass, and the ball was just underneath the basket when he managed to pick it up. Well, Barrett was short on the three, but Smallwood was underneath to clean it up. That's dime for him. P.J. Power. Outside shot doesn't go. Cook underneath. And a foul, I believe, may be called on Michael Barrett. And that is the call from Wayne Robertson. Barrett with his second foul of the contest. Herdman calls a timeout just to discuss things a little bit. They currently hold a one-point lead at 21-20 with 7.53 to play in the first half. The big scorer for the Herdman Huskies has been Mark Smallwood. He has nine points. And for the Regina Knights, you're looking at Ian Cook with four, but Frank White has seven to lead all night shooters. Rick, I guess the big thing right now is the play of Shannon Richards. He hasn't been an offensive threat for the Herdman Huskies here in this game. Just a single two points. He's had a lot of shots, but he hasn't been hitting at all. Yes, uh, Shannon Richards uh, was almost unconscious in game number two with the amount of shots he was hitting from way outside with a 34-point effort. But to this point, he has been silenced. And that will be a key for the Huskies down the stretch. They'll have to get him back in the offense if they want to make a move here. Well, we noted in game one down at Regina High School, Shannon Richards was limited to just four points in the first half, but he managed to come out strong and have a 12-point second half in that one. So the Knights are doing what they had hoped to do and keeping Shannon Richards off the scoreboard for now. We'll just have to see if they manage to do it for the remainder of this contest. There you see T.J. Power, and he's done a good job in this contest of handling any pressure that's been thrown at him, and that's obviously been the difference on the scoreboard. Well, the Knights are definitely playing the full-court press defense a little better now. The, the Her Herdman Huskies came out right from the opening tip-off and threw that full-court press at them, but the Knights are controlling the ball a little better and managing to find the open man a little better than they did here in Game 2. Another missed free throw. And in the close games, those missed opportunities always come back to haunt you. And another miss, but they get the rebound. Frank White underneath, he's fouled again. That's Mark Smallwood on the foul. That's two for him, and Frank White will go to the line. So three of the Herman starters, Mark Smallwood, Michael Barrett, and Dean Porter, each have two fouls in this contest, and Michael Barrett will check out give way to Paul Seaborn, who sees his first action of the contest. Sort of reversing the trend of this series, Don. Uh, throughout the course, it's been the Knights who have found themselves in foul difficulty, but not so far tonight. No, that's the Herman Huskies tonight who are finding themselves in foul difficulty, and the Knights are going to learn to capitalize on these free throws. We've seen Ian Cook, who's been cold from the line, 0 for 4. That time Frank White missed the shot. White with 8. All deadlocked at 21 with 7.50 to go. Knights are just four for nine from the line this contest. Got to pick up that average a little bit. Dean Porter. Corey right out now. No good. Smallwood, another rebound. Up and in. Mark Smallwood continues his outstanding play, Don. They're having a hard time containing him. Well, the Regina Knights in this series have found it definitely a difficult time of containing Mark Smallwood. 16 points in game one, 26 in game two, and 29 in game three. He just keeps climbing and climbing. The Regina Knights have got to find a way to shut down Mark Smallwood if they have any hopes of winning this contest. Shannon Richards had the steal, but he lost it back to Mike Peddle, and here comes T.J. Power, and we've got a foul, and Richards may be the guilty party. Reach in on T.J. Power there, and the Knights will get it back. Shannon Richards draws the foul. Regina get the ball on the side. Frank White to inbound. Seven minutes to go here in the first half. 23-21, Huskies lead. Hope you're enjoying the action on Cable Atlantic. Outside, Frank White. Good. 
That time just a two point shot. Rick again, he was very close to that three point line. The last time we saw him about that far, he did manage to hit the three pointer. This time the referees say no, that's just two. Frank White now with 10. Smallwood on the floor. And a tie up is called. Jump ball, the possession arrow stays with the Huskies. Quarter. Gets it to Shannon Richards. Richards thought about it, but didn't go. Seaborn from outside. Off the rim and over the backboard, and the Knights get the ball back with a chance to take the lead. Six and a half minutes to go here in the first half. 23-23, your score. Pedal being pressured by Richards. Gets it to Cook. Cook now will take it the length. Spots up, misses the shot. Frank White underneath. Good. A dozen for Frank White. Knights lead at 25-23. Down low, Smallwood, shot is up. Can't get it to go, Dean Porter with the rebound. Porter will take it back out. Wanted to get it to Richards. Richards now moves around, fires, and we've got a foul call on Mike Peddle. So Mike Peddle draws the foul, putting dangerous Shannon Richards on the line. Knights up by two. It's not what you want to do, although we mentioned Shannon Richards has only got two points in this contest. He'll try to build on that here. First shot is up, but no good. You see the frustration there on Shannon's face. He knows that he can hit these shots in the sleep, and he's just not falling for him tonight. Second shot is no good. Pedal now with it. Gets it to TJ Power. Power, watched by Porter very closely. Hard to find a man there. Look at the defense by Porter paying off at his heel, and TJ Power came around and fouled him. Corey Rideau checks in now. Burden and ride out your ball handlers. Shannon Richards taking a spell on the bench. Smallwood from outside. Way off the mark. Rebound goes to Frank White. White to Ian Cook. Pedal. Watch by Merton. To Parker. Back to Pedal. Pedal drives down the middle. Has it knocked away by Porter. Back to Frank White. He's been hot early. Ian Cook. Back to White. Down low to Parker. It's good. That was an example of Frank White finding the open man and the size disadvantage underneath. And you can't say it enough, Rick. That's what's been working for the Regina Knights in this series, finding the open man. Every time down the court, they're going to try to find that open man somewhere and get the ball to him. Dean Barker again driving. And we've got Smallwood with his third. And no doubt about the fact that Mr. Momentum is on the Knights' side at this point. And that was, more importantly, Mark Smallwood's third foul. Still 4.50 to play in the first half. Mark Smallwood in big foul trouble here. Michael Barrett getting ready to enter this contest. And that was a heady play by Barker. As soon as he got the ball, he dribbled down and took it immediately to the hoop, knowing that Smallwood was on him. And Barrett and Richards enter the game. Smallwood and Rideout check out. So Richards sat on the bench for about a minute there, Rick, and I think that was uh, served two purposes. A, it obviously gave him a little break, but B, coaches want to have a little chat with him and tell him, don't worry about it, the shot's going to come. Just don't don't feel the pressure right now. Relax, start, keep putting the shots up, and they'll eventually start to drop. Well, Barker misses the first shot, and if there's any category that the Knights might be a bit disappointed in so far, it's been their foul shooting, although Barker does hit the second. Knights leading by five. Down low, Dean Porter. Shots no good. Barker with the rebound. Very strongly. Frank White on the traveling violation. Heady play there by Merton, who came up, and White ended up carrying the ball, actually, to try to avoid the defender. Well, Frank White didn't know that Barrett was there. When he looked up, he saw Barrett. He tried to make the move around him end up traveling. Paul Seaborn on the violation. Ian Cook. 
Cook back out to pedal. TJ Power. He's looked very calm and collected to this point. Back to pedal. Pedal giving some quality time. Down low to Barker. Can't get it to go. Fight for the rebound goes to Pedal, who works it back out to Power. And again, the Knights showing some pretty good composure there, Don. Working oh, it back out, taking some time off the clock. Nice controlling the, the boards right now, basically. They're dominating under the basket, and that's what they've got to do. Well, the dangerous cross-court pass by Power was intercepted by Porter. Seaborn now from outside, can't get it to drop. Barrett fights for the rebound against Merton. Way outside. Trains the three-pointer. Big shot by David Merton. That's one of the few outside shots the Huskies have had to go to this point. Reduces the deficit to 28-26. Frank White now down the other way. Shots up. Can't get it to go, but we got a foul call on Paul Seaborn. Now the call there was after the shot, so it's a one and one. Bernie Hughes going to see his first action of this contest. We noted in game three that he missed games one and two. We'll check in now for Seaborn. <clears throat> That's definitely something the Huskies need. We'll see the replay there as Seaborn manages to get the body into Frank White and shooter. So Bernie Hughes, his big responsibility now is to start pulling down some rebounds under the basket. The, Knights, the Huskies rather have been losing that battle for the last five or six minutes. Well, now Hughes is going to use his size to pull down those rebounds. And as you speak, John, the Knights with another failed opportunity. Burden comes down and misses, though, and Barker's there for the rebound. Pedal now with it. T.J. Power. Power. Over to Pedal. Frank White looks for a man, gets T.J. Power, who fires from outside, and it's good. That's four for Power. More importantly, the Knights leading 30-26. to 26. Barrett from outside. No good. He's been off. Foul call underneath. Bernie Hughes was trying to get the rebound. And that's another one on Ian Cook. And that's his third of the contest. Tony Penton will check him out of the game. As Cook will get a break. With three fouls. They, they being coaches Reg Barker and Tyrone Power don't want to see their big man foul out as he did in game three. So Bernie Hughes on the line. He's 0 for 1 in this series from the line. Can't get it to go. A little too hard off the glass, and T.J. Power holds up. Let's the pressure come to him, makes the pass for Pedal. Pedal, cross court, Frank White fires. In and out, Dean Porter on the rebound. Shannon Richards now. Fires from way outside. Front rims, Michael Barrett on the rebound. Swatted away by Barker. Richards again from three. And Dean Barker is down on the floor, and he's hurt. Might be a pulled hamstring, I don't know. Dean Barker went up, and he went up to block that shot by Barrett. And when he did, he came down hard. We'll see if we can get that on the replay here. Keep your eye on number 11, Barker. His leg went out from under him rather funny, as you saw. I don't think that's the way the leg was meant to twist, and obviously uh, Barker is suffering as a result. I think the safe thing now would be to check him out for a couple of minutes. It's 2.34 left to play. You've got Jamie Hurd on the bench who's rested. He hasn't played at all this game. He offers some height for the Regina Knights. We don't want to risk any further injury to Dean Barker. Sit him out for a couple of minutes. See if the pain relinquishes any. If it does, put him back in. If not, sit the guy on the bench and hope there's a game five. Jamie Hearn will indeed check into the contest to see his first action. Well, Don, the Huskies had 100 points in game number two here, but at this rate, uh, they're going to be well shy of that in this contest. Well, as you mentioned time and time again, the Huskies are quite cold in their shooting. Big basket underneath by Bernie Hughes. And that's what we said he's got to do. He's got to control the play underneath the basket, use his height to his advantage, and that's what he did on that last basket. Jamie Hearn fires right back, and more importantly, he's fouled as well. Count the bucket and get Hughes on the foul. Well, that's the big key for the Regina Knights here now. They've got to make sure that Jamie Hearn can contribute as much, if not more, than Dean Barker. 
He's already got two points after playing about 20 seconds of this contest. He's on the line to try and pick up his third right now. Can't get it to go, but look at Tony Penn get the rebound. Frank White now. TJ Power, 4-3. Well short air ball. And the crowd letting Power hear about it. Shot was there though, Don, and well, Power felt obliged to take it. He could see all the basket on. That wasn't under any pressure. He elected to put the shot up, came up a little weak on it. Shannon Richards from outside. He has just not had the shooting touch so far in this contest. TJ Power now takes it the length of the court. Shots up no good. Bernie Hughes with the rebound. Rideout's got a man ahead of him. Holds it up though. Back to Richards. Over to David Burden. Fires from outside. Can't get it to go. TJ Power now. Falls on the court. Don with a heat in here, too. That's been a few players that have gone down. Richards for three. Can't get it to go. Bernie Hughes underneath. And what a contribution off the bench from Bernie Hughes. Well, exactly. That's what we said. Bernie Hughes is going to use his height to his advantage. He saw limited time in game three. Didn't do a lot for the Herman Huskies. This time out, he's coming in. He's got four points. Played about two minutes of the contest. He's going to go on the line again. Mark Smallwood, he was obviously contributing offensively for the Herman Huskies, but he wasn't pulling down the balls on the defensive boards. But Bernie Hughes checked into the game to fill that role, and he's also picked up a couple of points in this contest. 32-30 is your score. Regina Knight's leading, and now we've got the on-court activities again. One twenty-seven to go, and this place is a zoo. Well, Rick, they don't call this March Madness for nothing. And the crowd here says it all this evening. The Herman Huskies, one game away from picking up their third city championship in a row. And we should mention fourth in five years. We see the the banner there. I guess, Rick, that's an old one. They don't have 1992 up there yet. I'm, I'm sure that one's on order. A bird's eye view of this contest. And you talk about packing them in. Take a look at that shot. Bernie Hughes at the foul line. Shot is up, and we get another whistle. Just uh, lane violation there on the shooter. 127 to go. John, the big thing for the Knights, uh, the Huskies thought that Regina were going to come in here and lie down and play dead because of the big loss in game two. It hasn't happened. The Knights have been very steady and they've been very tough. Well, I think Regina knew what they were up against coming in here for game four. They knew they were going to see some form of the full court press and they were prepared for it this time. Mike Peddle called on the half court violation. Very close, but Wayne Robertson was correct in his judgment. Shannon Richards now as we get close to a minute. Richards fires. And a bit of noise from Shannon Richards, and that could be a confidence builder, Don. Well, the Herman Huskies need something from Shannon Richards. Just four points this half. He's capable of scoring a lot more. He usually does score a lot more, and the Huskies rely on those points. Jamie Hearn didn't get it to drop, but now the Huskies can take the lead. 45 seconds to go here in half number one. 32-32 is your score. Shannon Richards drives middle. Shot up back rim and goes out of bounds. Knights will retain possession and uh, with 35 to go, do you think it'd be a smart idea to play for one here? Well, that's what they've got to do. That'll if they play the full 30 seconds out. Well, Frank White obviously, obviously didn't think so. That would have been the smart play to do. You play out the 30 seconds, you give the Huskies five seconds to drive down the floor. It's not a lot of time. They're going to have to rush a shot. The chances are unlikely that they're going to score if they have to rush a shot in five seconds. Obviously, though, uh, Frank White's confidence level is well up there. That's 14 for him after a 26-point effort of game three. Barrett can't get the roll. Bernie Hughes underneath. Knocked away by Hearn. Four seconds to go in the half. TJ Power now for three. No good, and that'll end it. And it's a tense one, Don. 34-32, the Regina Knights lead the Herdman Huskies at the end of the first half. Stay tuned, we've got a special first half time show coming up for you, and we'll be back right after this.
watch what happens when I do this. This is really great. That's neat. We we'll try this. See? Whoa! How'd you do that? The Regina Knights leading the Herman Huskies 34-32. Rick, the Regina Knights certainly came out on fire that time. They were prepared for the Herman Huskies in this game.